Do you want to translate? Yes. My name is Jackie. I'm a fitness trainer, and I am the elder statesman of the group, and I'm looking for somebody warm and breathing. <laughs> warm and breathing. I'm Paul, so yeah. Hi, my name is Desiree. I'm 36 years old. I'm a professional. I'm looking for tall, dark, and handsome, socially conscious, and somebody will make me laugh. All right, we'll see what we can do to help these ladies or at least give them some guidance. Let's roll it, Donna. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> Debbie, our supervising producer, tells me that men like those you just saw in that montage are hard to come by. She inspired this program. Um, she's looking for a financially well-off, educated, established black man. They're hard to find, I am told. If you don't believe me, just ask the black professional women who will be on my panel and in my audience today. There is apparently a headline in a recent edition of the Chicago Tribune newspaper that says it all, black women losing the dating game. It seems that more and more attractive, successful, baby boomer black women are unable to meet Mr. Wright. Why, Deb? It's hard. I mean, you're spending a lot of time working, and you'd like to be with someone who you consider your equal. And um, a lot of reports have come out that there are at least four men to every, four women to every man. So, you know, to find that equal person is very difficult. Is that a uniquely black thing? Um, I can speak from my, what I've heard from myself and my girlfriends, and it's, I, it's pretty, pretty common in the black community, yeah. So, uh, what's your situation? Well, I'm single, and I'm looking, and um, I'd like to meet somebody who I think that would be compatible. So, is today's program is the idea that you'll get some advice that might help you That's down what I'm hoping, the get some advice, talk to some men about what they're looking for, what makes women attractive to them, and hopefully give us some information that we can possibly meet Mr. Wright. All right, well, like the, uh, their white female counterparts, black women want to meet somebody with the same interests, the same educational level, more or less, with some economic status, with similar likes and dislikes. It's the most normal thing in the world, so why isn't it happening. I think that before we meet our panel of single black women, we should hear the real deal about the relationships from the men themselves. All four of these guys have appeared in uh, this calendar that Debbie found, the Alaye Fit to be King calendar. Uh, my first guest is no stranger to the daytime audience. He stars as Neil on the CBS number one rated soap opera, The Young. The thing about the black women, are they are successful black women? Are they too, some, I don't know, I don't want to fill in the blanks. Go. Well, I, I think that um, in this day and time, uh, things are different. In the old days, in the 50s, 60s, it wasn't appropriate for a woman to come to a man and say, I, I, I respect you, I like you, you want to go out for a date. Mm -hmm. I think in this day and time, it's not uh, unconscious, unconscionable for a black woman or any woman to come up to, to a guy and say, um, would you like to go out for a day or would you like to have a drink? I, I think that would be appropriate. Krista, how would you, re how would you respond it to that? It feels good. No, it definitely does to, to be uh, admired or, or, or to have a female come up and say, hey, listen, you know, I, I've been watching you. I'd like to uh, ask you out on a date. That feels good. I'm flattered. Yeah. Sure. You don't feel put off at Not all? Not at all. You no. don't want to call the, uh, the beat? <laughs> no, man. No, no. No, what about you, Mike? <laughs> Me, uh, <laughs> I think it, it's it's always nice to meet strong, positive people, and I think if you see something or someone that you would like to get to know better, then uh, I think it, you should be able to, to make that move. But is there legend has it when a, a black woman achieves a certain level of self sufficiency, education, success, there is an intimidating aura to her? Do you buy that? No, I, I don't. I, I think we, as, as black people, and it's, gonna, it's taking us time, but we, we, we get to levels where we don't see a lot of ourselves. And so you, you don't have uh, your community around you. Yeah. When you walked out on Angela Bassett in, in Waiting to Exhale, you walked into the arms of the white woman. Is yeah. that part of the problem, do you think? 
that black men now have it all. They can go anywhere they want to, basically. A lot of the old taboos have just become obsolete. Well, no, for, we don't have it all. First of all. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, I think it's the same for black men. You know, the, they, that man was in a, a very high um, economic money status, bracket, for sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, well, he just had problems. I don't think we could talk about him. <laughs> yeah. He had some, some problems. Do you think, Brian, that uh, women have different expectations than men? That, for instance, do women confuse sex with love? I, don't, I, I try not to put people in categories. I, I think that a lot of times we try to think that people are like equations. You can just plug in any number and it's all going to be the same. You know, people have constantly changing variables. And with me, at least, I try not to, I think the problem is you try to take all of your XX baggage from your last relationship and apply it to whatever the new thing is. And a lot of times, you know, you get the stereotype, especially with, with guys like us who are, you know, at least, at least myself, marginally successful. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm marginally. marginally. Okay. I, I, you know, I think you throw, out, you throw out rules. I mean, uh, there shouldn't be rules and re regulations as far as dating goes, as far as your attraction to someone or, or something like that. You have to throw out the rules and go, go for broke, so to speak. Chris, do you ever date, date around? Do I date around? Uh, no, not anymore. I, I've, uh, I've been in a relationship for the past two years. So I'm not dating presently, but when I was, <clears throat> pardon me, you have to excuse me, I have a cold. Uh, but, but when I was, uh, it was uh, not so often. Uh, I, I have two children, and uh, my, my little girl, that she's four years old, when she was born, after she was born, uh, I, I, something changed inside of me, Geraldo. You know, I went through a real kind of transformation because of having this beautiful little female, and now my approach to females is completely different. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a, a fun show, basically. These guys are all obviously very successful. The young ladies we're about to bring out, we got a preview of them before the program uh, began. Uh, equally successful in their own way. Uh, you know, Debbie's got her, her own views on what the social scene is like. It's a, it's, a unique, uh, it's a unique perspective. We're going to definitely take a look at it. Stay tuned. How to meet and marry a black man. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's that's the imbalance there. He's what do you mean, okay? He's just, you know, he's okay. He's not the average black man, so he's just okay. Oh, he's not? No. You mean he's extraordinary, or do you mean his body just... is not the average black man that we meet from day to day? So he's okay. Just okay. What's different about his? He's, he's just a little bit too muscular for me. Oh, really? Oh, my God. <laughs> this is what she's looking at. <laughs> Pass it around. Don't... Yeah, don't get sucked into it. Yeah, yeah. Don't get sucked in July or anything. Like that. So what do, you, what do you think of the panel? Um, the panel is nice, but my question is to Brian McKnight. I think I'm the average black man that you meet. The right guy for me, the black professional. How'd you do and that? I'm lucky. How'd you do that? Well, um... I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. Uh, Crystal. Crystal. I think he's the one that said that uh, women, if you can come up to a, a, a man that you are interested in and um, let them know that... So what did you say? Well, I just introduced myself. Mm -hmm. We worked together and I introduced myself and I told him that um, I was interested in, in him mm -hmm. and he was flattered and we went out to dinner. But you know, there's a book, The Rules, and it says you should never do that. You should never be forward that way. If you let the well, guys come to you. Times has changed. You know, this is the 90s, and I think with, with anything, a career, anything that you want, you should go for it. Well, good for you. So what's going on? And my question is, um, I'm getting married, and I want Frank McKnight to sing at our wedding. <laughs> 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 Brian, hum me a couple of bars. <laughs> <laughs> Also, may I interject something? I, I mean, is there a book of rules uh, about your heart? Is there a book of rules about how to have a baby? Is there a book of rules about how to walk up to someone and shake their hand and say hi? I don't think so. I don't. There is. Oh, tell us. Introduce well, yourself and tell us what. Well, I'm Cassandra Cato Lewis, Marshall Cato Lewis, and this is my co-author Monique Jellerette de Young, and we wrote the book How to Marry a Black Man. There are books. Why'd you write the book? Because there are books on childbearing, there are books on child rearing, there are books on how to go to school, how to be in school, how to get a job, how to, how to find an apartment, how to work on the internet. 
why not a book on how to get married? Is her advice good advice? The young lady. Oh, we love advice. But what Chris is, Chris was saying, um, there is a book. The book is inside each person. You know, it's, there's, you're right in a sense. It's not a book that everybody can go to a source book. But we want people to look inside at themselves because each of us has their own book, their book of what they need to do to make themselves happy, so and that then they can attract someone else. That's, that's the key. Right. Mm -hmm. There's no book that says. Now, that's the reason I don't like the rules, because they have all these rules for you to do to attract someone, but it's like a hollow shell. And if you don't have the inside person happy, and you look to this other person to make you happy, it's not going to last. That's why they even say in the rules, keep doing these rules even right. after you're married. Right. Sure, I understand. Uh, you, have to, you, have to, you have to be yourself in right. order to get along with someone else. Otherwise, you're presenting some false person. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you we'll have to. Out. Yeah, you will be <laughs> found out. And, and yeah. if, if, if you always follow those rules, then we wouldn't be here today because we were told in 1994 that a black calendar, a calendar featuring, featuring Afro American men, wouldn't work in society. It, there was no need Willie's for it. Willie's also a co producer. Right. There was no need for it. So we went to all the major calendar companies and they said, well, we have all these pictures of these major guys, I mean, major stars, and they said it won't work. So we had to actually do it ourselves. And of course, these guys are very gracious to do it because we, we, know, we know the fact that we can't pay these guys enough to be in a calendar like this because, you know, it's, we just can't. But they do it because they want to make a statement. The statement is that I'm black, I'm beautiful, I'm here, I'm a man, and I want to show my sexuality that we don't get an opportunity to show versus in the media, uh, in movies, in television, and so forth. We can't show that side because we're uh, shackled by uh, stigmas that are put on us from the slave days to say that the Afro-American man is something that the white woman shouldn't look at, and yet the, the man is, he shouldn't look at the white Who's woman. Who's buying so, the calendar, bro? I'm sorry? Who's buying? Black women, white women, everybody. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, our first year, uh, over half of the women who bought the calendar were women of um, uh, Caucasian women. So the, the, Isn't the that part of the problem, ladies? Isn't that part well, of the problem? I, really, I know that that gets mad when I say that. I do yeah, get mad when I ask our last men. Go ahead, ask Thank away, you. ask away, um, Desiree. Um, well, what I'm finding out, because I've gone, actually, I'm biracial, and I've gone back out and started dating. I've actually kind of changed my outlook on the whole dating process with my, um, some help from my sister's book. My sister is Monique. And um, white women seem to be getting the edge when black men become successful. And, I mean, I can think of it in a culturally discriminatory way in the slavery um, leftovers that we've discussed earlier. But what do you guys think? I mean, what do you think? Do you go look to a white woman when you become successful since you are successful Brian, black men? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not I accusing. I just... I don't know if you really go and look for anything. I mean... Yeah. Do you least, think you become more attracted to something that's unattainable or or has it become so attainable that right now <coughs> it's making men even more unavailable for black women well I, I know there's a gross missed, uh, <laughs> missed uh, calculation of black women who marry white men as opposed to black men who marry white women right. that is the case I think white men date black women but they don't marry them as much as black <coughs> men date and marry white women I think that's that's imbalance there but I, I think in any case you want to look for your race, but if you don't find it, you find love where you find it. You know, I, I can't sit here and say that I'm against anyone loving someone. If you can find someone that you're compatible with, I think blood is blood. You know, it's, it's the same color as red. Uh, I think in the animal kingdom, which we all look at, you know, sometimes a, a tiger doesn't always hunt the impala. He goes for a warhog sometimes, or, or what, if you will. I mean, you One of the analogies for there. dating. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to date any warthog. I don't know about you, man. <laughs> well, I, want to I, I get the point. I, get it. I, want, to, I want you to so formally meet the ladies, and we'll take a break. Jackie lives in Chicago right here. She says that, unfortunately, in her opinion at least, black women cannot have it all like their white counterparts. Why is the difference between a white woman and a black woman? What's the difference? Yeah. I don't know if it's the cross-section of women that I work with, it just seems like it's easier for them to attain certain uh, or be um, accessible to certain types of men. It might be just the women that I work with. It seems like their lives are so easy. It seems like I'm standing there waiting for Metra a lot, and they're rolling up in their cars. Not just material things, either. Um, the types of husbands they have. And maybe it's because I get to hear this all day because I am a personal trainer. 
But it just seems like I'm working awfully hard. And it just seems like their lives are so much easier. Ooh, okay. And that could be just because of the way, um, like I said, the economic group that I deal with. Mm -hmm. Desiree's uh, 36 years old, as she said at the top, looking for Mr. Wright. She's a Cornell University graduate. She's an executive in the film business. She says that what she is looking for uh, in a potential mate has changed over the years. What's new? Well, um, I, I used to be, I guess, um, snobbish, as my sister would say, earlier when we were hanging out in the village in our apartment. Um, and I would go kind of for the investment banker type, the lawyer, the stockbroker, that type of thing. But actually, after reading, I, I've actually changed in the last year, and as, as frightfully as that may sound, um, and starting to look at black men who don't have the quote-unquote great jobs and all that stuff. I think black men, we have to look, I, I love black men. That's one of the things I'd like to say. And I think they're spiritually and culturally and they're just rich in, in so much. And I think that this discriminatory world has kind of given them a, a knock on the head, if you will, and it's keeping them a little bit down. I'm talking about the majority. There are exceptions to the rules, but people slip through. But, so I'm looking for somebody that has the things that I need rather than things that I wanted before, like the BMW or the whatever, which I never really wanted a BMW, but um, <laughs> now I'm looking for stuff that I need. Now you're looking for a pulse. Commitment. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, hopefully, <laughs> but commitment, sensitivity. I've got to take a break. I'm sorry, we'll be right back. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> what, what'd you, who just said that? I heard that. Someone said, slap him. <laughs> I would like to just know, how much did they pay you to say that? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have a hard time living that one down, Michael. <laughs> and he's a very good friend of mine. And, uh, I've been with a black woman for 12 years. <laughs> is that right? All right. Yeah. Karen is younger than my first two guests, but she already realizes that black women need to know how to provide for themselves because there's no guarantee that there'll be a man out there to do it for you. Exactly. And... Uh, my situation, I guess, is a little different because my job is a little more out there because I work in radio. Ah, GCI, I got to do the plug. <laughs> but um, the thing about it is... You play Brian's record on GCI? Actually, Brian sang for my boss's wedding. Oh, there right. oh, we go. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do bar mitzvahs, Brian? <laughs> I got an accordion. But Karen was saying. No, but the thing is, not only do I have to find a man, I mean, my thing is I'm not necessarily with the blue collar, white collar issue. He does need to have good credit, I will say that. And that sounds shallow. How do you but check a man's credit? It's not like checking his teeth. I mean, well, you... I mean, there are ways. I mean, I'm not saying that I would necessarily do it, but there are ways that you can. Oh, yeah. You can, you can pull up a man's CRW. You are only 24 years old. Exactly. <laughs> don't, don't you think you still have some time that you could just date for folly, for fun? Well, I believe in dating. I don't believe necessarily in dating for folly. My coworker is in the audience right there, Jimmy. I would go out with him for folly. He's somebody that I work with, somebody that not, I don't necessarily have a romantic interest in. I think, I think Karen's right, though. That's one of the things we try to tell people with her book. Exactly. Especially black people, they don't date enough. Exactly. They go from one serious relationship into to another, another serious relationship. We need to date and be friends with each other. All people, you think. And share. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, our book goes, Geraldo, for blacks, whites, males, females, gay, straight, anyone who is, is serious about getting into a relationship, a long term relationship, and not trying to complete themselves with someone else. Right. We say complement yourself with the other person. I have a question for, for Deb. I, you know, you've been kind of on the air now since September mm -hmm. when we decided that I wanted you to come out from the closet of production. <laughs> Has your life changed at all? Um, socially. In, socially, in small ways. I mean, you know, Ever since we posted that 1-800-DEBRA. <laughs> <laughs> you made a comment to me the other night when we went out to dinner about my ring. I usually wear this ring on my left hand. I, I was I just, very much he against He was really it. upset about it. He said, I was. Why are you I said, why you, you're stopping. You're putting a signal out. Stay away from me. Guys. And I didn't yeah, think they right, paid right, attention, right. but right. a guy in my neighborhood said, I didn't know you were married. I said, I'm not. He said, you had a ring on your left finger. Yeah. It's, it's so now, they, now they'll think, think, think you're cheating on your husband. It's on the right hand. All right. But, yeah. So has your level of confidence or your outlook? I think the way men perceive, perceive me, one guy said, um, 
well, am I good enough to date you now? And, you know, now it's my oh, color. Oh, wow. So, now you're going to have that to deal with. Right. <laughs> like one more right. thing to think well, about. Well, are you like Desiree? Do you mind white color, black color? I mean, as long as it's a nice guy, I don't have a problem. He can be black, white. I mean, I don't have a problem it's, as long as we're compatible and he's a nice guy. Single black male, 31, attractive, intelligent, educated, computer professional. Well, the attractive part, we, you know, <laughs> us on the outs, but... I've got to say something. All right, so what, what, are you, <laughs> what are you looking for? Uh, someone who is intelligent, good compliment for me, and spending a lot of time... So Desiree, hey, what about this guy? I'll go on a date. Well, what are that's you doing later? That's, that's what I, I don't use the rules anymore. Black men don't follow exactly. the rules. So you have to now bend the rules, and now I go out on dates. They don't have to be that perfect person anymore. They don't have to come up with all of those things that pay for the bill, pick you up, call you before. So right, well, give, give me a card. I'll put it in the hopper. There. Rules. <laughs> <laughs> I really have to give me this card. All right, let's go through the rules. Now, see which ones we like. Thank you, uh, Samuel Turner the second. Whoa. This guy's big. This guy's big. See, the problem, the problem uh, wait, I gotta, I'm going to give Desiree the card. <laughs> If, if, if you want to have it, it's yours. Well, you the, uh, problem, the problem with rules are, the problem with rules are, rules are broken. You know, rules are made to be broken. There are no set rules for every, I mean, it's, it's like okay, let's, let's see how we like these. Virgo do the same thing every, every day. I mean, Indicate if you like these with your applause. Don't talk to a man first and don't ask him to dance. <laughs> Debbie, why? What? See, I, I follow some of these rules. I know. <laughs> Would you follow this one? Um... I used to ask guys to dance, because I love to dance, and you go to parties, and they won't ask to dance, so I'll ask them. But nothing ever comes of it, and they dance and move on, and, you know, it doesn't It's kind of like work. when the guy asks you to dance, you say, oh, no, thanks. <laughs> you, you're getting a taste of the same medicine. And what we say is, the more people you ask, the, the higher your rejection rate, the sooner you're going to get something that does See, pan out. Don't meet him halfway, oh. or don't go Dutch on a date. How do we like that one? Oh. I'm for that way. <laughs> that's a big thing. I mean, I think, I think going back on a date is pretty cheesy. I think, it's cheesy. I think it's if he asks you out on a date, he should pay for the date. Me too. Exactly. That's what I if you ask him, I'll do you a date. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What'd you yeah, say? Yeah, I do. Wait, wait, wait. I will pay. What? What's that? There's no problem with that. Do you pay? The man asks, he pays. The woman asks, she pays. Right. Well, do you pay or the, what last date you had? If I ask. Did you ask? Exactly. I haven't had a date in a while. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris is raising his hand. Maybe that's... <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Geraldo, I, I think I, chivalry has, uh, is seemingly a, a thing of the past, but exactly. uh, most definitely. Gentlemen, I mean, I know that you're out there. They should be paying for that. I agree. That's right. That's, that's right. right. That's right. Wait, 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 wait. Let's see what Jimmy has to say. <laughs> I, wait, I sense that Jimmy and you go Dutch. Well, no, it, but it didn't no, say no. first date. See, yeah, Christoph just first said date. pay yeah. for the first date. Absolutely. But it doesn't, the rules don't say first date. Right. It says go Dutch on a date. That means any date. And, and no, I don't, I, I don't think that men should always pay. But that's either. not what we're saying. I think, I think, I think, I think that's just cheesy, man. though. Yeah. Because the thing is, when I, if I'm dating someone regularly, mm -hmm. yeah. Just so they don't feel obligated. You know, I don't want you to feel obligated like I owe you something because you paid for me to eat a $20 steak. I don't think I'm that cheap. I would rather go out on a date with you, you pay, and then, hey, we go out, I'll pick up the bill. I have no problem with that. I work every day. Okay. But still, on the other hand, I... Well, Jimmy, did you pay or did she pay when you went out? He has a lunch to cook. He, we always eat for free. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least he didn't bring it up in his brown paper bag. <laughs> to get over their type. Everybody has this type of person. I used to only date people who were 
tall, light-skinned. Light up. I wouldn't even go on a date with them. That's the thing my sister learned finally, that you can go with, don't categorize people by what they look like. You two have got all kind of genetic things. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to figure it out. And yeah, really. Yeah. more than one person at a time. I here's here's another rule. Yeah. Don't call him and rarely return his call. How do you like that? <laughs> That's don't a good call one. him. <laughs> rarely I return his call. That's a good one. I mean, you don't have to call. Why? Call. Why, Jimmy? Why is it ridiculous? <laughs> if I call you a couple of times and you don't call me back, you I won't call you again. Yeah, exactly. It's just plain rude. I'm, I'm not calling back. <laughs> Debbie, do you call me? I call them back. I'll give them my number exactly. and they can call and I'll return the phone call. Well, that's fine. That's but if fine. But what, 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 if it's wrong? somebody that you're interested in, what the, what, what's wrong like? with calling Don't me? accept hey, a like Saturday you. night date after Wednesday. That's ridiculous. ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's the dollar. Yeah. Yeah. But if you accept it on Friday, doesn't it show that you're kind of hard up? No. 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 My social life when I was single was so disorganized, I would never remember why I did it. Any other day, I would always end the day first. Never exactly. let the guy say, well, honey, you gotta, you gotta go now. Always need them one more. Always need them one more. But the problem with all this is that it's manipulative. I mean, you're trying to manipulate Of course someone. it is. Yeah, and it's I marketing, mean, really. It's, it's not about... <laughs> a, 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 relationship, a relationship is not about manipulation. It's about being trust. It's about being together. It's about learning each other, learning how to care about each other, learning about what you like, what you don't like. Right. If your toothpaste is turned the wrong way, how to correct it or whatever. I mean, it's just little things. And if you don't know who you are, you're not going to know what you want to make. So oh, you have exactly. to figure out who you are. Brian, how are you going to prevent <laughs> falling into another relationship? Or are you looking for another relationship right now? I'm not looking. I, I think that really I have to be happy completely by myself. Exactly. Which is something I never really... Yeah. You know. That's not for a A lot of people make that mistake. But Chris, though. aren't you going to be forced into a relationship because of your children? Am, am I going to be forced yeah. into a relationship because of my children? No, I don't feel that way. But I, I'm already in a relationship. So. so how has she reacted to your kids? Oh, they love her. And they, uh, they really do. I'm jealous of their relationship because my little girl just idolizes her. She wants to dress like her, talk like her, walk like her. It's an amazing thing. <laughs> Did the fact that the kids expedite your looking for another Miss Wright? I'm sorry, Geraldo, what was that question? That was like your question is like the alleged person. That's a... <laughs> <laughs> is it not a fact that you sit there today, Christoph St. John, that you found this woman just because you wanted someone to take care of your kids? <laughs> just, I, I think that, you know, the, I have a one-sentence commentary. You know, uh, you know the old expression, to, your own, to thine own self be true. Don't, don't judge your worth by someone else. Judge it by your own inner self, and I think that's the ticket to a lot. Exactly.